Today, I want to talk about six retinol mistakes that I commonly see my patients make and hopefully this video will help you if you're trying to start on a retinol or you're struggling to use a retinol because as you know and as if every dermatologist ever tells you, there is nothing that we know of scientifically that's proven to be as effective as retinoids when it comes to anti-aging. There's so many benefits to using retinol. It helps protect our collagen. It helps stimulate new collagen. It boosts circulation. It also helps boost production of hyaluronic acid and elastin in our skin. It helps with pores, fine lines, wrinkles, hyperpigmentation. So really the list goes on and on and on. And we have so much scientific data on retinoids that doesn't exist for any other skincare ingredient. It doesn't matter what you read online, the science and the data always points to retinol. So it's one of the best things you can do for your skin. I do have a video that goes into more detail called Retinol 101. I'm in love, I'm obsessed, and I don't even feel guilty about it. Let's talk about mistakes that you may be making while using a retinol. Number one is applying it right after cleansing. A lot of people do this, you know, I, I say if you want that skincare ingredient to really penetrate things like hyaluronic acid serums or peptide serums, those are great for applying to damp skin. It enhances the absorption, it helps with hydrating the skin, but you don't want to do that with a retinol because you will probably get irritation and then give up on using it. That irritation can actually make your skin look bad. And you're thinking, wait, I, I thought retinol was supposed to make my skin look better. Why is it looking blotchy and dry and peely and all sorts of side effects? So you want to wait until the skin is really dry. In fact, you really want to wait about 20 minutes or longer before applying your retinol. And I have my own technique where I like to cleanse and hydrate my skin. So that's when I'll apply my moisturizer right after cleansing to damp skin. I do this earlier in the evening, so between 5 to 7 p.m. And then hours later, I will apply my retinol on its own to dry skin because my skin's already cleansed. It's already moisturized. I don't need to do anything else but use my retinol. I love it. I mean, I'm, I'm so passionate about it and it's what I do Your passion all the time. Number two, applying too much. A lot of people just, you know, are just pumping that retinol in or squeezing that tube and just applying it like it's a moisturizer. Uh, uh, you're being a little extra. <laughs> but in fact, it is a strong skincare ingredient. So you really wanna limit how much you're using. If it's in a cream or gel form, you wanna measure about a pea size amount. If it's in a serum form, you really don't wanna use more than three to five drops for the full face. And yes, you can try to apply it on your neck and chest, but again, even smaller amounts in those areas because the skin on the neck area is much thinner than the face, so it's much more likely to get irritated. Uh, and it will also allow the absorption of other products like perfume, for example, if you try to spray perfume on your neck and you're also using Retin-A, well, guess what? You're gonna get a rash because it's gonna make that perfume penetrate more and make that perfume allergenic. In a good way or a bad way. Bitch, you better be joking. Be cautious about how much you're using. You don't need a lot. It's not a moisturizing cream that you just wanna you know, slather on your skin. Number three, exfoliating the same time as using your retinol. You really don't wanna do this because you're double dipping. The retinoid already boosts cellular renewal and makes your cells go through the skin layers much more effectively and revs up that that maturation process. So if you're also adding an exfoliant, it may make that retinoid a lot more irritating. So personally, I only exfoliate one to two nights a week. You don't really need to exfoliate more than that. I have an entire video on exfoliation. You guys can check it out. I go into much more detail on exfoliating, but really you wanna just do it once or two, two nights a week and your retinol, you wanna skip it that same day you exfoliate. Retinoids really need to be applied five times a week for you to see the maximum benefit. Some people that use retinoids 
once or twice a week, ah, you're really not gonna see the difference in your skin and you may not actually get past the peeling dry stages. Number four, expecting to see results in four weeks. You're gonna be disappointed. It can actually take your skin six to eight weeks to start changing or what dermatologists call retinizing. And then really, I find it's really the three to six month time frame when you really start to see that retinoid glow up your skin, you see your texture improve, your pores shrink, all those things take time. Your skin is not Amazon Prime. It's not gonna change in like two days or two weeks. It's gonna take some time for you to see those changes. So don't give up. Typically, you might still be in that peely, dry stage at two to four weeks. After four weeks, your skin really starts to acclimate. But again, you really have to use that retinoid five times a week to see results. You can start it every other night and then slowly titrate up to nightly, ideally. Number five, applying it as spot treatment. I don't know how many times people try to do this in my office, they'll, you know, just use it when they get a breakout or just use it in an area that they see a wrinkle. It is so bad, I wanna give you a zero, but that's not possible, so I give you a one. You have to use it all over for a period of time to see those intrinsic skin changes that really give you that glow up. Retinoids are not spot treatments. They are truly designed to change your skin for the better. They are designed to prevent acne. They treat acne, but better so, they prevent the first formation of an acne papule, which is the clogged pore. So to see the maximum benefit, use it all over, give it time so that it changes the nature of your skin for the better. And lastly, using too many actives in your skincare regimen, particularly when you're starting your retinoid. I call retinoids the superstar of your skincare regimen, meaning that it doesn't like to share the stage with a lot of other actives. So if you try to overwhelm your skin with a retinol and all these other active ingredients and using too many products on your skin, you're gonna run into problems. Problems like dryness, peeling, increased breakouts, all these things can happen because retinoids on their own they are superstars. They should be the main feature of your skincare regimen. Everything else in your regimen should be supportive. If you're gonna use other potent actives like vitamin C, it's best to do that in the morning and reserve retinols at night. Because retinols get broken down in sunlight, and actually some studies show that it is unstable and even with visible light. So it should only be applied at bedtime, and during that time we should just use a supportive moisturizers, things like creams with stem cells, growth factors, nourishing ingredients like vitamin E, niacinamide, glycerin, ceramides. These are all very hydrating that helps strengthen and support the skin barrier allowing the retinoid to take over and make those wonderful changes that we know can happen with your skin. I find a Lift and Renew Retinol Serum to be one of the best retinoids on the market. We have done skin biopsies. We've taken samples of skin from people that have been using the Lift and Renew and compared it to those using prescription tretinoin, 0.025%, and actually it shows very similar efficacy. So we saw increase in collagen, elastin, just better quality skin under the microscope. I favor this product because there's a lot of science that went into formulating this. It's also less irritating than prescription Retin-A, so check out Lift and Renew. It's one of my favorite retinols, and it's what I personally use. And I put it on, it gives my skin like such a nice glow. But again, don't use it with a lot of other things. Don't exfoliate with it, just use it on its own. All right guys, I hope that was helpful. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe and share this with a friend. Until next time, bye guys.